Well, thanks for coming today. Uh, start of year two and some good things going on at Drake. Obviously, you know, the second season of our vision um, of Drake basketball with the new practice facility getting ready to open up out here. A lot of good things going on. There's five freshmen that are on campus here, um, two Big Ten transfers that will sit out this year, and, and a, you know, a good group of veterans that um, you know, we've had 18 months to build a relationship with. So um, excited about the start of practice coming up here on Friday. And um, it's really the first phase of this season of what we want to build. Um, last year, you know, we tried to uh, put in our culture and our, you know, what we want to try to accomplish offensively and defensively uh, and be the best we could be. Um, this year is really the, the, the first phase of then building for the future. So, um, you know, it, everybody talks about practice starting on Friday. We, they've been here all summer, <laughs> so we've had uh, two one-hour practices for June and July and, and um, you know, individual workouts here leading up until this Friday. So we've been together, you know, as everybody else has in college basketball quite a bit. So... Coach, pretty much uh, 500 season overall last year. What's the next step uh, as far as maybe postseason goals that this team has to take this year, that you want to take this year? You know, I, I think this really starts the, the building process because we have guys that are going to be with us for four or five years. Um, you know, I, I go back to, you know, trying to be the best we can be. Uh, I, it's probably a little early to start talking about postseason, to be quite honest with you, not to, you know, be pessimistic by any means, but um, this is my 30th year in college basketball, and I don't have all the answers, but I got a pretty good idea of how we need to build this thing to get to where we're going, and this is the, the first step of taking that process. So we're not going to change anything as far as, you know, our slogan is win the day, get better today, and just focus on that. Um, a couple of years from now, we'll, we'll start talking about postseason and some of those kinds of things. But right now, we have five freshmen. We're trying to acclimate uh, in with five or six veterans, and then two guys that are, are going to sit out and really help us out and be a big part of it, but they're not going to be able to help us this year other than in practice. How did uh, Gary uh, Ricks, as far as buying into the culture you're trying to set, how do you do with that? And is he in a position now he can pass that down to these five freshmen? I, the, one of the, the things I've been most happy about is, you know, we have five or six older guys and five seniors, and those guys have done a great job with the five freshmen and the two transfers. And that always is not the case. Um, you know, right away people could start thinking, well, you're bringing guys in to take my spot, or, and, you know, Carl Madison, JD, uh, Gary Ricks, Chris Caird have all done an amazing job from the very first day of June the guys got on campus, the seven new guys that got on campus, of just trying to uh, integrate them to our, our program and family. Um, you know, one of the things we've tried to implement is, you know, you come get 500 shots up every day and, and at some point during the day outside of practice and those guys have really been very helpful uh, into the seven new guys. So the chemistry within the team is, is very good. Um, it's is maybe a little bit better than we could have hoped, to be honest with you. With five uh, freshmen incoming guards, it's a lot. Is there going to come a point where we have to decide on some red shirts? Yeah, we're, we're going to have to at some point try to figure out what's best for the program and best for those guys to mature. You know, I look at a guy like Corey Kensling. He's going to need a, a red shirt at some point in his career. It's probably not going to be this year. Um, one, he's a year young for his class. He's got a really bright future. He, he's big as a house. He's got great hands. He listens. Um, but with just having Jacob and he at the five, it's not going to be this year. Um, you know, I think Casey Schlotter, somebody else, has, has a bright future. With big guys over the years, 
you know, you can go to five or six different guys that I, players I've been involved with and just see how much better they were that fifth year than they are in the first year. So uh, Casey, I think, is somebody that, you know, again, at some point in his career, I, I just, as we move along in practice, those things will kind of figure themselves out. Coach, talk about your, you talk about the transfers coming in, Kale and uh, Graham, and what they can bring in, because obviously they can't play this year, but they you're bringing in Big Ten talent, and they can help you guys uh, to help the players you know, from, from being veterans uh, on other teams. Yeah, the, the thing I think I've been most pleased with those two guys is they have a mentality of, of Big Ten basketball, but it hasn't been, I'm lowered my standards at all to come to Drake. Um, I mean, their expectations are what our vision and what we want out of Drake basketball. Um, they go game speed every rep. Um, they've had a taste of basketball at that level. Um, both had, were successful at that level, and I think they can really pass that along to, to especially our younger guys. But um, a lot of times, you know, over the years you take transfers and there's a chink in the armor somewhere along the way. These two guys not only are great human beings, they great students, they exemplify what a Drake student athlete's about. Um, but they got a work ethic and a hunger to get better and, and maybe a little bit chip on their shoulder to prove people wrong. And so we're going to benefit from it because I don't think we got better or as good as we could have last year in practice because you weren't practicing against guys as good or better. This year we'll have two guys on that scout team that will push us to get better day in and day out. Can you talk about Jacob a little bit? I mean, he made so much progress from start to finish. He came in right before the season started last yeah. year. Had no summer workouts, and you know, and he played overseas this summer. Yeah, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on him, but he he's made great strides in a short period of time. Um, where I think he really believes he's going to be a very good player. His body's drastically changed. He had never been a part of anything like a college basketball season where he grew up and is from. And so even though he only averaged five points and five rebounds, um, he's a, a huge foundation piece of this program. And I think his experience of playing 19 minutes a game last year will have huge dividends going into this season. I mean, he's a different guy. Just He just is. Now he's got to be able to do that with the scoreboard lit here. but. Um, it's a normal progression of what you get out of a 6'11 true freshman where he gets a lot of minutes and maybe takes some lumps along the way, uh, but we're going to be paid great dividends this season and two more seasons, you know, looking into the future with him. Jacob, you know, they say the Valley's a guard bleeding, but you're going to have to have some help from Jacob in there too, though. It looks, you know, is, is that, how big a concern is that? You, you miss Seth, you bring back Jacob, but he's got to have some help in there. Yeah, he'll, he'll have help with, with Corey. We'll be able to, to back him up uh, efficiently this year. Um, you know, we have, we're going to kind of be by committee at the four. You know, um, we're going to move Trevor Berkeley to the four this year. He played the three last year, started a bunch of games for us um, to try to become more versatile, both defensively, how to defend ball screens, and, and offensively also. Chris Kerr is coming back at the four. Um, so, you know, I, I think we've addressed some issues and, and need to continue to address them as we move along. But uh, I think Corey and Jacob will, will be fine. God forbid nobody gets hurt at, at the five yeah. spot. Does, uh, does that increase? And you guys are moving the ball up the floor pretty good last year anyway, pace-wise. Even more so now because in the sense you probably don't want that half-court game where somebody's just going to trade elbows in the paint. Uh, I mean, our goal and philosophy is to get stops uh, or to create turnovers and have an advantage and try to get easy baskets. And that's the message, maybe even more so this year than it was last year. Um, that's the carrot. If we do a good job getting a stop or create a turnover, we want to push the ball and have an advantage, you know, trying to score at the other end because it's so hard to score in a half court set today. Coach, what's the biggest thing you took away from year one, uh, kind of evolving now into year two? You know, I thought, you know, the guys bought in uh, as good as we could have hoped. Um, you know, so many times you take a program over, and no disrespect to anybody, but I mean, 
you end up five or six wins on a season and it's just uh, we never had that we had good practice after good practice we had people bought in from the start so the culture was being set even though maybe it didn't you know 15 and 16 is a pretty darn good year in the first transition year um, you know, I don't know if we'll have those same numbers this year, but it will be the basis of what we build on from this time moving forward. But just establishing a culture, establishing how hard you have to work every day, um, those guys probably exceeded expectations. And, um, you know, now we need to continue to build from that. But, you know, don't get me wrong. Now, I, I, we're not here to, you know, be average or but there's a certain process that takes place to get to where you're going and it's not wiggle your nose and it's done overnight um, we will be needing to held accountable in years three four and five we're still in that process of, of building to those points of the five freshmen uh, or of the five freshmen guard is there some and i know you've got practice but are there a couple you're already saying they're going to have to play key minutes for us now i think uh ori and reed are very capable of playing, you know, making a very huge contribution right away. Not to say that the other three can't, but at least in our workouts, both those guys are are, are going to be able to step in and help us immediately. Hey Coach, you mentioned you you know, you've got those five seniors in Gary and George and Chris, Trevor and Carl. Or one or two of those guys emerging and saying, this is my team and really taking that leadership role by the horn? You know, uh, the biggest surprise has been Carl Madison. He doesn't even look like the same guy. And, and I never saw him or our staff saw him in high school during the recruiting process. You know, he was a guy that was injured uh, so much of his first part of his career here. Um, he, he looks like a totally different person to me um, as far as an athlete and, and just his confidence as a basketball player. Really put in a lot of time. Uh, in the gym each and every day in the off season, just basically one working on his body and two working on his shot. Um, he, he, to me, from w one year to the next, is the guy that's um, I think w could be the biggest surprise. The other piece is Matty Richardson did an amazing job with Gary Ricks. The injury he had, you know, with some guys is uh, career ending. Um, Gary's been pain free and healthy now literally for three months and knock on wood we can sustain that through the season but you know he's a guy that averaged 12 points a game in our first eight games last year and um, just I don't know we like I think guards and, and that uh, can pass dribble and shoot are play best in our system and he's one of those kind of guys. Coach you see Carl is more like a, the true point guard and George is more like a sixth man or, or do you feel like having Jordan at running point or Jordan at running point has a more of a better alternative for a year system? Carl's more of a point, Jordan's more of a combo um, and again we got two months here to kind of see how it's going to play out. We're going to need all those guys um, you know, to be able to, to function at their best. But Carl's more of a point for, for this team. Reed Timmer's more of a point. But in our offense, we can play two points uh, on the floor together. At times last year, we weren't very good in a half-court offense because, you know, and again, no, no disrespect, but, you know, we had some guys at the wings that couldn't come off a ball screen and make a play. You know, you go back to when things are successful, you know, and at least in my past, you know, Gonzaga is, and I hate to keep bringing Gonzaga up, but would play three point guards because they got all pass, dribble, and shoot. And so it's easy to function in half court offense when you have that. Um, you know, we didn't have that last year, you know, per se, once, especially once Gary went down. With Jacobs being on the Danish national team in European competition, did that really help his development this summer? Can you see a difference from that experience? Yeah, huge, because he, he put really good numbers up, and uh, I can't remember what the, the competition was called over the summer. We were able to watch it on the internet. Average darn near a double-double, 10 and 10, uh, or 11 and 10. Um, but I, again, that experience was just invaluable last year of playing 19 minutes in college basketball and being thrown right into the, the wars instead of, you know, 
for some guys, you know, it would be to redshirt. We didn't have that luxury with him, and and he made the most of experience of his experience. And when you see him today, I mean, his body fat percentage is down to 12 something now. Um, he's just a, a different body type and, and a different mentality. Where uh, last year, I think you know our staff had to keep telling him how good we think he can be. He's starting to, to believe that, or he does believe that now. Let me ask you about Blake real quick, because Blake got off to a good start, had the motto, never really recovered this season. How's he you know, uh, he's going to have an opportunity. Um, you know, it, it's his deficiencies come at the defensive end of the floor, uh, just body size and, and and being able to move his feet. Um, but you know, he's a guy that still can stretch the defense, and um, you know, hopefully he can get back to that confidence he had early on last year. Do you expect Chris K to take a little more on the scoring role this year with, with Richard Dodd? Just like, yeah, he had his moments actually where he really shined, especially that point. Like yeah. I think, you know, Chris just needs to do what the game is give, you know, gives him. And he's really good at being able to to pick and pop or or to screen and shape up. Uh, that's almost better than running a play for him. He's a good high low passer. Um, and if he can be more consistent over the course of the season, uh, that will give us invaluable help as far as you know being able to get Jacob the ball down low. The other perimeter players all can, you know, Gary and JD and Reed and Ori can knock open shots down. Um, but just somebody at the four spot that they can stretch the defense a little bit is is really valuable, and, and that's what he does best. Coach, I know that's a passion of yours, but now you're in the practice facility. How much does that? I mean, this practice facility is a game changer. Is is when you guys have a chance to go through it. I mean, there's there's not 20 of them in the country like this. Um, it changes how Drake basketball is perceived. It changes how you know the the caliber of student athlete we can recruit, um, and we're going to build players over a four or five year period. And you have to have a place for them to go. Um, you know, kind of 24 seven to be able to. You know, to to be the best that they can be at their their game or craft, and and that building provides that for not only us but for the women. Anything that, else for coach? Did that building pay dividends for you in this year's recruiting class? Sure. Even though sure. Yeah. Up yeah. I mean, having the uh, diagrams and pictures, and and once we broke ground, w without a doubt, with with all five of those freshmen and those two transfers, with without a doubt. We have three commitments that I can't talk about already for the 15 class, and so the the there's a lot of good things going on here for uh, for the long haul. Um, obviously, we need to make the most of, of the time we're in right now. But even for those three young men and families, for them to have committed so early, um, a lot has to do with with that facility.